Samsung phone was launched at 7499 but right now it's available at just 44000 rupees and you know what this is powered by Snapdragon and not Exynos yes i am talking about the Samsung Galaxy S23 that went under the radar when it launched last year but now at this new price this phone is getting a lot of attention in fact a lot of you guys have been asking whether you should consider this phone or is there any catch how bad is the battery life and how good is the camera performance well in this video i'll try to answer all your questions and if i still miss out on some thankfully there's a comment section with that let's get started first of all let's see what we get in the similar price range okay so these are all your options i'll come to the specifics later but the biggest thing that differentiates s23 from all the other phones apart from not having a charger in the box is definitely its compact size i'll understand if that doesn't excite you but i used iphone 12 mini as my primary long bag and i loved using that device compact phones are quite comfortable to use they are extremely handy fits easily in your pocket and they just don't suck you in i mean you use them when you need them and keep them away when you're done you don't really feel like using them mindlessly which is again really great if you want to cut down on your smartphone usage see the benefits of a compact phone can only be understood once you start using it and since there are not a lot of options in the market right now s23 does stand out apart from the size let's see how s23 fares against the competition now if you compare it with the oneplus 12r you will see that both the phones have almost similar performance but oneplus gets 1.5k ltpo display a bigger battery and faster charging speeds but samsung on the other hand gets an overall better camera setup realme gt6 gets a better display bigger battery 256 gb ufs 4.0 storage in the base variant but the build quality is not as good iqoo neo 9 pro also excels in display battery and faster storage but lacks in camera and build quality xiaomi 14 cv and vivo v40 pro are camera centric phones and they compete well against the s23 cameras but again fall short on performance and the overall build quality to put things in perspective you are getting the absolute best performance on s23 so you shouldn't be worried these are the benchmark numbers in comparison with all the other phones to give you guys some clarity as you can see s23 competes well be it in n22 geek bench or even 3d mark of course it does throttle a bit more but that was expected because of the size of the phone even in gaming the gameplay was pretty smooth in bgmi cod mobile and even genshin but it does reach 41 degrees in 30 minutes of gameplay and the battery drains pretty fast although this phone doesn't hold up in gaming performance and it gives you the best it can but this phone is not meant for all day gaming and that's strictly because of the battery size in day-to-day -day usage the phone performs without any issues i also didn't face any issues in connectivity as it has everything covered for a flagship yes it does get warm during charging and extensive camera usage but that's the case with almost all the phones and now if i talk about cameras the specs might not impress you but the output does here are the photos that i took from this phone and as you can see the photos come out pretty good be it in the daytime or in the low light the 3x tele photo shot also come out pretty good and the ultra wide camera also takes some very nice photos the hdr is the only thing that samsung is pretty inconsistent with but other than that the photos after the processing turn up pretty good and yeah in terms of selfies these are the photos from s23 and vivo i think you can easily tell which one is better in terms of videos you can record 4k 60 from all four cameras but can only switch lenses while recording in 4k 30. there's camera x api integration as well so yeah pretty sorted see if you're looking for an absolute best camera phone then i think you should go with vivo but if you're looking for an overall good phone with next to best cameras then s23 is definitely a very good option by the way i'll also leave a camera sample tribe link so make sure to check it out before you make up your mind now that we're done talking about the performance and the cameras let's talk about this display first things first it's not an ltpo panel and that stings a little but it's still a very good screen pretty sharp and bright and you get proper hdr support on all major apps which isn't the case with most other phones and even if you place it against any other phone with crazy peak brightness numbers you won't feel much of a difference you also get an ultrasonic fingerprint scanner on this one and it works quite well in terms of movie watching experience i really wasn't expecting much but the hdr content looks pretty good stereo speakers were also quite loud and clear and the separation was also well done all in all the display on this phone is pretty good and you won't miss out on anything substantial lastly the build quality of the phone is also top notch with a premium glass metal design victor's true protection on both sides and ip68 rating it's also extremely lightweight and that's a big relief for this finger of yours and by the way this phone was extensively used for long-term reviews general testing and that too without any protection and you still can't see any major scratches or wear and tear either our team is super careful with the phones or the back glass of this phone can't hmm scratch that 
this phone is definitely well built. And now let's talk about the battery. All right, let's not get into numbers because you already know that and talk about the thing that matters the most, the SOT. Okay, so I was getting an SOT of around four to five hours in normal day-to-day -day usage and I don't game a lot. The overnight battery drain was around 8% with Wi-Fi, mobile data and Bluetooth turned on and it was around 2% with everything turned off. And finally, the phone goes from zero to 100% in one hour, 18 minutes, which is pretty slow for a battery this size. See, battery life is pretty average on this phone if you game a lot but if you scroll a lot don't worry this phone won't give up that easily believe me i've tried now there's one more thing that makes this phone super tempting and that is the software experience i say this because the ai features that were marketed heavily with the s24 launch are now available on s23 as well and if you compare the s23 with s24 there's not a lot you're missing out on given the price difference now the big question is should you buy s23 for 43 triple nine in 20 2024. Well, the answer is yes. This is a very good phone for the price because of its premium design, powerful processor, feature is software experience and very good cameras. Yes, the battery is a bit concerning, but that's the only thing that you need to keep in mind. In case you are already using S23, share your experiences in the comments and if you have got it in deals, let's see who got the best price. So yeah, that's it from my side. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.